Now let's talk about the event subscriber. And to have a good example, we'll be doing the exact same thing as we did with event listener in the previous video, and we'll be listening to the kernel exceptions. So, the deal is a bit different. Instead of event listener folder, I'll create a new event subscriber folder. So you do event subscriber. I like the name because it's much more easier to not misspelled. So event subscriber and inside it, I would like to create a new PHP class and I'll call it kernel subscriber, for example, sub, I think I misspelled kernel. Anyway, I just typed kernel, kernel, yeah. Uh, perfect, and we have to rename the file to avoid loading problems. Perfect, great. So the difference between the event listener and the event subscriber, other than the performance, that the event subscriber choose which event to subscribe to. So the first thing that is different that it does implement the event subscriber interface from the HTTP component event subscriber interface. And right here, since we are to implement this interface, we need to use its methods. So right here, if I do uh, Alt Control or Alt Enter, it will add it or tell me to add it these kind of um, over to override the methods from this interface. And we have this get subscribed event, and we have this beautiful example right here illustrating how to use this method. So. Right here, let me just get rid of this command and I will do return an array, actually, that will be containing a kernel event. And from this kernel events, I'll be listening to response control, etc. I'll be specifying to exceptions. Okay, so I'll be listening all the exceptions that will happen. And I will be assigning this exception to what method I would like to define that will be handling this exception and this method will be this one method or more method will be implementing inside our class. Let me just remove this that it's simply for me to navigate up and down. Okay, so this will be an array actually and the first one will be another array that's containing the method as I said. So let me call this show error message. You may say where the hell did this came from? It does not come from nowhere. It simply will be a public function inside our class that is named like that, okay? So it will simply dump something wrong, happen it, like that, happen it. Okay, then it came another property which is the priority of the event. So in a given subscriber, different methods can listen to the same event. The order in which methods are executing is defined by the property called priority or parameter. So we could set it here to 10, for example. And the higher the number, earlier the method is executed. And to have a better idea about this, we could use our terminal to debug the list of event dispatchers that are listening there to any specific event. So to do that, I'll do php bin console and I'll do debug and let's go for the kernel exception and it will show me all, oops, all the listeners that are listening to this kernel exception. So if I enter, because I'm just having an error right here, sorry for that, there you go, I'm just redo that again. It will show me that I have all these dudes listening to my event. And this is show errors is the one that is defined here has a 10. So as I said, the bigger is the earlier and the 10 is the bigger for this and it will be executing the very first and I could stop the propagation of the event right in this one, okay? So let's go ahead and test this out. So before that, actually we need to tell our service loader that I have this kernel subscriber that is doing this kind of things. So yet again, as we did with the event listener, let me just duplicate this one right here and event listener will be event subscriber. It's just copy the name to avoid any trouble and it will be kernel subscriber. Make sure that the name just 
is the same and instead of event listener it will be event subscriber right and we don't need to pass this event type because we are defining it right here inside the class okay time for truth let's go and break down our application if i do refresh something happened wrong and as you may see here we have two event listener event subscriber firing at the same place so let me just deactivate that that you could see only the event subscriber so now if i do refresh i'm having the message back so we're not killing the application because here we had a die right there and we have our message something went wrong that is actually defined inside this subscriber 